This video is brought to you in partnership with GamerSups. Use code JAZZY at checkout for 10% off. Well folks, it is finally time. Resident Evil is one of my favourite series of games ever made, and I'm actually quite surprised it's taken us this long to cover one. Well, besides Resident Evil Verse that I did about a year ago, but I mean, the first proper, proper Resident Evil. And having put this to the vote up on YouTube, you lovely lot have decided that the first Resident Evil game we're going to be covering is... Today we are going to be escaping from the Mouldy Baker family, completing the main campaign three times, doing a huge amount of collectibles. We've got a lot to do in this game, folks. So let's waste absolutely no time because there are quite a couple of Resident Evil games to go through. And welcome to... What the hell was... What the hell was that? Oh! Welcome to the achievement grind, son. <laughs> So the very first playthrough for Resident Evil is going to be the casual one. This is where we're going to take in the story for the first time, get used to the mechanics, collect all of the collectibles that we can, and get all of the miscellaneous achievements that we can as well. And just to really quickly stop you, I really hate what I'm about to say, but unfortunately I have got to censor quite a couple of scenes in this game. Now, I absolutely despise doing it, so I apologise in advance, but YouTube is my job, so unfortunately I've got to play by their rules. Anyway, now let's continue. The game begins with a message. Mia starts by sending a lovely video to Ethan saying how much she's enjoying her new babysitting job, before it then cuts straight to the opposite with Mia then saying that she's been lying to us the entire time and she's not gonna make it. But most importantly, she asks us not to go looking for her. We of course go looking for her. Now it makes sense because those messages didn't actually reach Ethan, so he has no idea of the danger that he's driving into. But it has been three years since Mia's disappearance, and Ethan has just received an email from his supposed dead wife saying, come and get me. So we go and get her. And also just to let you folks know, for those of you that don't know, Resident Evil 7 is actually quite a short game, and you unlock a lot of achievements for doing not really anything much. So just as a reason as why we may be unlocking so many so constantly throughout the video. In fact, the first we get is just for arriving. We step out of the car and immediately unlock she's alive. The main door is blocked off, so we begin to trek around the house to find a way in, hopefully to Mia. Quickly, we realise things aren't right here. Horrible sculptures around the back of the house and a glimpse of a potential friend. Only 30 seconds after the last, we have arrived at our next achievement. Outside the house, we find a bag, and when we inspect the bag of its contents, we unlock the next with aha! Also finding Mia's driving licence in the process, which is a good sign that we're close. Like the rude goit we are though, we just walk straight into the house, an obvious mistake when we see the state that it's in. But nothing stops us and we press on further, soon finding a videotape. Now these tapes are quite important, as when played we get a snippet of something that's happened in the past, but more importantly there are achievements tied to them as well. This videotape shows a filming crew going to the house to film an episode of Sewer Gators. The first thing we do is unlock an achievement though, as now we can unlock the drawer in the kitchen. Once done, we unlock the master of unlocking. As you would imagine, things very quickly go wrong, and the tape ends with most of the crew dying. From this, however, we are able to find a secret passage that takes us further into the house. And would you believe it, after three long years we've found her. Mia is alive and well, and after a confusing moment, we go to leave together. As you would imagine, things aren't right though, and after losing Mia again briefly, we find her in a rather bizarre state. She's mouldy, insanely strong, and immediately goes on the attack, stabbing us repeatedly. Before she finishes the job, however, she snaps out of it and then knocks herself out, which saves us a job honestly. Definitely not the day Ethan planned I imagine. Now you may think that she's unconscious, not so, as she once again rises to dish out some more pain. With a divorce imminent we arm ourselves and go on the offensive this time, eventually ending this lover's quarrel. With that chaos over we then talk to somebody on the phone called Zoe. She knows what's going on apparently and she says that she can help, but more on her later. For now we just have to chase Mia as once again she's ran off, and fortunately the West is behind us. Give fuck. It's okay. It's okay. It's me. I know you didn't mean to hurt. Me. Uh, obviously, she's hiding something behind her back. Oh. You shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurts. Okay, maybe it's not, as Mia soon takes our hand and runs off like a little limb goblin that she is. But enough messing around, it's time for the final fight. We grab a gun and go to shoot our wife lovingly in the head as anybody would. Thankfully, the weapons work brilliantly and Mia goes down for the count. Thankfully, nothing else can go wrong. Well, 
I didn't think that was so soon. <laughs> what the hell? That guy stole my bit. God, it's nothing sacred anymore. With that, we unlock Welcome to the Family, son. And we wake up in probably the most iconic scene of the game. Here we meet the family proper. And after that incredible intro, it's time to start the game properly as well. And why the hell would I eat or drink any of this? Marguerite, if you wanted me to tuck in, you should have offered me some gamer subs. As we go to escape our irksome confinement and plan our escape. It goes well for about all of 20 seconds before Jack comes back and begins to chase. This though gives us the perfect chance for another achievement, as when we block an attack by guarding, we unlock arms in the air. Not only that though folks, because apparently this isn't the only thing we did, as we also unlock behind closed doors for, well, closing a door apparently. Yeah, as I said, this game really does give you an achievement for absolutely everything. Thankfully we're able to sneak away from Jack, and we lose him once again so now we can explore the house more. And we're saved as a policeman officer has finally arrived to help. Except that he doesn't believe us when we say that we're in danger, even though we have a very clearly visible stitched hand. Fed up of our silliness, he asks to talk to us in the garage, and in there things go about as well as you'd expect. Won't you do your job and tell me also folks, if you want to say hi to YouTube, now will be, now will be the point, because <laughs> this is going to be in the video. Click. How sharp is that shovel? Sharp shovel aside, we actually have our first boss fight. Our first run in with the patriarch of the family. So our first instinct is to get in his car and run him over repeatedly. Unfortunately for us though, even though it's hilarious, it doesn't really seem to phase Jack. And he takes control, driving us into rebar. We both survive the crash momentarily until Jack succumbs to the explosion that follows after. And we're free to move on again now that Jack's dead, of course. In the next room, we have another achievement as randomly there is a shadow Shadow Plinth. Ah, the Shadow Plinth puzzles, an absolute staple of the Resident Evil franchise. All you have to do is find the right object that when is shone on this plinth will cast the shadow of the picture of the painting and unlock a door. They are fairly simple to do. However, for using the wrong object and trying to be a bit sneaky about it, we instead unlock the achievement, nice try, and it, it was valiant. But that's not all folks, as we also find our first Mr. Everywhere trophy. These are another collectible in Resident Evil and we will need to break them all for an achievement. However, for defeating the first one, we unlock the achievement here, there, and everywhere. And just know that this is going to be the first of many collectibles that we get throughout the game. We have to collect antique coins, files, Mr. Everywhere, tapes, the full shebang. So more on these throughout the video. In the next room though, we find another tape and this one has an achievement tied to it. This tape sees us play as Mia trying to escape a chasing Marguerite. We simply have to complete the entire tape without Marge finding us. And it's actually easier than you think. Just be careful to hide when you see her lantern start to shine bright and you should be fine. Now, even though the tape ends with us getting captured, we still unlock Can't Catch Me, which is a bit hypocritical, but sure, why not? The main objective for now is to find three dog heads that are scattered around the house that will open the back door to the rest of the garden. And having already collected two, we know the final one is in the basement. This is where we finally meet the casual enemies of the game, the moulded, disgusting, lanky piles of goo that certainly pack a punch. However, a bullet or two to the head puts most of them down easily enough, besides a couple of special variations. Whilst fighting these creatures, we also also unlock our next two trophies. The first is for simply finishing off an enemy with a knife, something very easily done in the Resident Evil game, so once done, we unlock things got personal. The next was for just simply using an item. Around the world are psycho stimulants, which allow you to see items hidden in trees and stuff like that. But for enjoying this tasty snack for the first time, we also unlock open your eyes. We eventually find the item that we need, however, somebody has beaten us to it. Let round two begin. This time, Jack truly means business as once we start to beat him mercilessly again, he goes for a pretty intense weapon. Jokes on him though, as with that weapon in his hands, we can get yet another achievement that has a simply duck under one of his attacks. Now it does take a couple of tries to get right, or it certainly took me a couple of tries, but eventually we unlock duck if you love life. With no reason to keep the fight going though, we once again reduce Jack to a pace that's only purpose is to grip the path when it's snowing. And with the final piece to the puzzle in our hand, we are also able to unlock the door and once we take in the fresh air again, we unlock you in getting away. The caravan in the middle of this area is the safe house, and inside, Zoe the daughter gets in touch again to say that Mia, herself, and the rest of the family have been infected with something, and Zoe may know of a cure. Now, we really do need to find that cure, though, as if we try
try to take Mia away from this land while she's still infected, apparently that will result in an easy kill. So fine, cure, I'm on board. The first part to the cure has us going to the mother's territory. Unafraid, we march straight inside and see Marguerite's gift, as she would call it. An unlimited supply of hilariously large bugs. Gross and terrifying. But these bugs once again give us a couple of chances for some achievements in a few moments. At this very point in time, we once again bump into an unpossessed Mia before Lucas gingerly takes her away once again, and we come face to face with the mother. Joke's on her though, because here's our next achievement. The spider door spawns and we begin to slash away at it pretty damn furiously with our knife. Once the door is clear, we unlock slash 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 the slash. Jesus wet, that was difficult to say. The next achievement involves Marguerite directly, as whilst exploring the house, we can bump into her occasionally. For the next achievement, we just have to fill her lungs with lead. Once she runs away like the little punk bitch she is, we unlock back off Mrs. B for getting her to run away. Eventually exploring the house more, we make our way further throughout it, and find a flamethrower in the process, which is just fan dabby dozy. But we also find a backpack. Once picked up, our inventory size increases, and you'll be amazed we unlock another achievement within the bag. We're finally on to our next fight though, folks, as we need the lantern that Marguerite is holding, and I don't think she's gonna give it up willingly. Especially not after transforming into the most disgusting and cursed wasp nest that you've ever seen, and scared the absolute stuffing out of me, but we don't talk about that. Don't worry folks, as you'll be amazed to know that during this cursed fight we have another achievement as well. Randomly Marguerite will start scurrying all over the walls like a rabid moth. Occasionally she will pounce at you. For the achievement we need to knock her back out of the air before she lands. Again, easier than it might sound if you keep your eyes on her. And eventually you too will unlock fly swatter. We continue the barrage of pain and it eventually gets too much for her. Marguerite erupts into a white stone thing and crumbles to the floor. Now unlike Jack, she is actually dead. When they turn white and crumble, that means it's truly game over for them. With the lantern in hand, we can now go through a door and at the very end of this sequence, we find the first half to our cure, an entire ass arm. Yep, let's just slide that into our pocket and just take it with us apparently. Things take another bizarre turn however, as when we go to leave, we see an small child who quickly runs away. Damn, hope we don't see her or any of her intense doodlings ever again. With Marguerite dead, the first half of the cure got and complete, we return to the house and unlock the grave without the truth. Going back to the caravan, we then try to tell Zoe of our success. Another hurdle makes himself known though, as Lucas has joined the party. He's taken Zoe and Mia hostage, but not only that, to get them back, we need to play a little game of his, which was inevitable of course, but right now we're not done exploring. To arm ourselves for this fight, we upgraded and got everything that we needed, including another achievement, as in this game you can craft items like health, ammo and special bullets. For this achievement, we need to craft every item that we can with regular and strong chem fluid, easily done throughout the game and eventually we unlock first place at the science fair. During this exploration we also found our next videotape, Birthday. This one sees a rather unfortunate human be put through a miniature saw inspired escape room. It's quite the fun sequence actually, with some pretty intense moments. However, the one thing that we need to remember about Lucas is that he is a maniac, totally different from the rest of his family, so he obviously set up this puzzle for death. At one point during this tape, we take a pen out of an oil drum, and the episode finishes with a candle to the birthday cake lighting everything on fire, including the human. This tape as well though has an achievement tied to it, and another rather simple one. We just need to complete the entire tape within 5 minutes, something that is quite hilariously easy once you know what to do and where to go. So we quickly completed it a second time and unlocked Out Before Dessert. As Ethan once again, we go to meet up with Lucas, who seems to have taken a page out of Vass's Encyclopedia of Insanity. But before the bout begins proper, we have another video to watch. Here we get a real look at the insanity of Lucas, as well as a glimpse of the cure part that he also holds. Deciding to finally go for it, we race to take him on. And the activity that he has planned may look a touch familiar. Of course, it's the birthday party again, and this is fantastic because not only do we know how to easily complete it, we also know that Lucas is planning our death, and we can avoid that. So that's exactly what we do. We manage to light the candle on the cake without a real fuss whatsoever. Lucas realising that he has just been simply outclassed, then goes to cheat. This also doesn't work though, as with this new bomb we blow out the wall and get closer to Mia, Zoe and the Cure. In his office we take the other half that we need and race to go and save the Whammin. We arrive moments later and both are thankfully saved. We hand Zoe the Cure parts and somehow she immediately crafts them into two syringes. With this we have two doses and now can save two people from the mould. Nothing could possibly go wrong.
Things then immediately go wrong, as Jack returns in his final form for one last fisticuff session. We instead then obliterate him with bombs, bullets and bruises, aiming for all of the cliché Resident Evil eyeballs that we've come to expect from these games. With one last shot, Jack goes down, but not for long again, as when we go to leave, he re-emerges and goes for the kill. Zoe then screams for us to use the cure on Jack, and let's face it, it is our only option right now, and it works a treat. Jack writhes in pain, but he is cured, and we leave him to turn back into a regular Joe. Oh wait, no, Joe's his brother. But can you folks understand the dilemma that we've got right now? On one hand, we can save Mia, on the other hand, we can save Zoe. God, I wonder which one we are going to choose. Of course, we save Mia. She's our wife. Zoe is a stranger. However, do not worry, as we will be saving Zoe in the next playthrough for another achievement. So, let's save our wife. Of course, let's save our wife. With our wife now cured, Zoe casts us out, as if she was expecting anything different. At long last, we are safe and the nightmare is finally over. Is what I would say if we didn't get taken out by a tentacle about 30 seconds later. But folks, we have a change of pace, as when we regain consciousness, we're playing as Mia, and it's time to trek through a huge ship for some reason. When we enter the wreckage, we also unlock You Better Start Running. Now, I can't lie folks, the ship section of this game is easily the weakest aspect of the story, and almost is verging on the point of boring. Now, I understand why the devs did this, as I can't imagine getting house and mansion fatigue, if that's the right way to put it, would have been good either. However, I feel like this was just a little bit too cliche and a little bit too boring. And I must admit, I would have rather stayed with the family than do this ship section. However, we do get quite a good bit of lore from here. Now, this entire ship part is only really here to clue you in on how the entire mold infestation truly started. And like all creepy horror games, it starts with a little girl. Throughout our journey on the boat, we get to meet her properly and realise that Mia already knows who she is. Very well, actually. Eventually, we reach Evelyn and she asks Mia to watch a tape so that they can be a family again. For some reason, we just oblige and pop in the tape. Oh wait, we oblige because for doing this, we unlock the final tape and for it being the last one, also get Be Kind, Please Rewind. For playing it, we see that innocent Mia is actually working for a corporation known as The Connection, who were the ones who bred Evelyn as a bioweapon to host the mould. The idea is that this host Evelyn could be dropped in the middle of a war somewhere and could infect the battlefield and kill every enemy within days. But Mia was on the ship with Evelyn originally to transport her and hide her from teams trying to stop this weapon from happening. The cliche happens as you would expect. Evelyn breaks free, turns the entire crew into monsters and decides that the only thing that she wants is a family of her own. Evelyn then infects Mia with the mole to try and convince her to be a mum. Basically. As this happens though, the ship sails through a cliche hurricane, and Evelyn and Mia are the only survivors who wash up on shore at the Baker residence, who Evelyn then chose to be her family. Now I know I just threw a bunch of lore and info at you, but honestly this is the entire gist of the boat section. The only achievement that we unlock during this section is just for simply killing an enemy by attaching a remote bomb to them. It did take a little while to get the right animation to play, but we eventually unlock that's a spicy meatball. Again, sorry for dropping in, but there is actually a law reason why Evelyn is a 10 year old girl that oh so many horror medias love to portray as the villains. Now when the connection were engineering their hosts of the mold, they designed every single one of them as a 10 year old girl. Because their thinking was if we can make our enemy look as absolutely innocent and non-threatening as possible, then she will easily be able to work her way into a battlefield, wipe out everybody in a day or two, and not one person will probably realise that the 10 year old girl was the insane bio weapon. I actually thought that was quite Quite cool to find out, so the more you know. With the tape done, all we have to do now is find Ethan once again, who Evelyn has captured on the boat. When we find his location and go to save him, we also unlock our first collectible related trophy, as finally we find the final coin of this playthrough. Picking it up, we unlock pelicans in your pocket. We eventually find Ethan and break him out of his gooey cocoon. Now in control of Ethan again, Mia just outright throws us off the boat as the mole takes control of her once again, as Evelyn is not happy. But it is time to end this now we need to go and stop a child. As you would expect as well folks, once we leave the ship and head back to the house, we unlock into the depths. We are at the final push now folks, as during our journey back to the house, not only do we get the cure that will rid Evelyn of the mold and stop this once and for all, but we also finish most of the other collectible related achievements as well. The next is for finding and reading every note in the game. Once done, unlocks the devils in the details. When we make it through the mines under the house, we also destroy the final Mr. Everywhere statue and again, unlock Mr. Nowhere. Now back in the original family, manner, the final fight is upon us. Evelyn summons flashbacks and Mia moments meant to slow us down and affect our brain. 
doesn't want to be my daddy, then he can die. Yeah, she's really desperate for a family. Eventually though, we reach her in her floaty form, and once injected, we see who Evelyn was this entire time. Yep, the grandma. The grandma is Evelyn or E001. The little girl was nothing more than a hallucination, and this is what the true Evelyn looks like. Thanks to her mutation, she apparently ages at about 25 times the normal speed, which is why in just three years she has gone from a small child into a fully decrepit woman. Once injected, the mold seriously hits the fan though, and Evelyn transforms into the biggest molded that we've seen. She is actually quite easy to take down though. When the fight starts, we unload absolutely everything that we can into it, and when the fight leaves the attic, we see helicopters from a rescue crew drop down a well-needed anti-mold gun. We pick it up and unleash it into Evelyn, once and for all putting her down, as she crumbles into chalk. With that, we also unlock End of the Night for getting the first ending, as well as play it safe for beating the game on easy. The game ends with a soldier boy checking up on us. And nope, I do not believe for a second that that is Chris Redfield. D no, it clearly isn't. So Charlie Blue Hill reunites us with Mia who survived the boat incident and the final shot is the helicopter floating into the distance, no doubt on the way to a divorce lawyers. And there we go folks, that is Resident Evil 7's story and I personally think it was absolutely phenomenal. Even though I didn't really appreciate the ship moment during it, I've kind of grown to like it now because of how much really interesting lore it gives you about the entire situation. Capcom truly reinvented Resident Evil with this and brought it back to being a household name. They did so, so well. However, we are a little bit off completion yet, folks, as we still have two entire playthroughs left to do. And unfortunately, even though the next two entire playthroughs are challenge runs, essentially, there really isn't that much to talk about. So for the next playthrough, I'm going to be going for five achievements. We have to complete the game within four hours, only use health items three times, and only use the item box three times as well. Whilst we're doing this, we're also going to be getting the alternate ending where we give the cure to Zoe instead of Mia, and I'm also going to get an achievement that I missed where we have to kill two creatures with a single bullet. And honestly, there is nothing really to talk about here, folks. We just did the exact same thing that we've just done, but faster. We failed it once because I I stupidly opened the item box at the wrong time, but the second attempt, everything went as smooth as butter. The different choice to the ending sees Zoe get on the boat instead of Mia, and Zoe literally dies after two minutes. She literally doesn't make it off that dinghy alive. It is silly, especially since you play as Mia in the exact same way. The only thing that changes in the story is once Mia rescues you, you have another mini fight with her. That's it. That's the difference between the endings, as they call it, and I just don't get the point. It just seems really needless to have that choice. But it's the choice we took all the same. We do get all of the achievements that we need though, folks. First was less is more for getting two kills with one shot, and this was easily done during the Marguerite section. We then beat the game in record time, unlocking Walk It Off for using the med kits three times or less, Resource Manager for the item box three times or less, Just Get Me Out of Here for completing it within four hours, and Just a Memory Now for the alternate ending. The final playthrough has us beat the game again on Madhouse difficulty, a mode which adds more enemies, makes every enemy stronger, tougher and packs a hell of a meaner punch, and some mechanics and layouts have changed as well, which was amazing to play. I really loved the fact that they showed this hardest difficulty so much love by changing so much. It made it really, really fun. Again though, it wasn't as difficult as you may think. From the speedruns and all of the other challenges that we've done, we had unlocked some of the best weapons in the game, with the best being the circular saw. This thing melts through enemies instantly, even bosses on Madhouse. The hardest part of this entire run was the beginning fight with Mia, as you have none of your unlocks there. But once you gain access to the item box, it's an absolute breeze. The only thing that I had to be careful of whilst going through this was recollecting all 38 coins on Madhouse difficulty. But again, we got an item in the game that were glasses that showed every single secret item location, so we didn't even need a guide for this at all. So closer to the end of the game, we picked up the last coin that we needed all together and unlocked Mad Pelicans. So rather anticlimactically, we complete the game on Madhouse again and unlock lock both Who's Your Daddy Now and The Nightmare's finally over for beating the game on Normal and Madhouse. Folks, there we are though for today. What an absolute treat it was to come back to Resident Evil, and 7 was probably the best game that I could come back to, as I've only played it the once. So being able to get lost in this universe again pretty much for the first time was such a treat. Resident Evil 7 has, I think, my favourite collection of DLCs in any game, and some of them are insanely difficult and nightmarish to complete. So they need their own time, as for now, the grind is over.
Honestly, folks, I cannot wait to post my DLC video as I'll really be able to get into all of my thoughts and opinions on this game. But just slightly, the base game summed up, absolutely fantastic. A proper, fresh and new take on a beloved series and they knocked it out of the park. I have hardly any bad comments to make on Resident Evil 7, but I will save most of my comments for the stats, which will be for the next part. So for now, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate you all being here. And if you've watched it right through to the end, a special thank you to you as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe though as this video is the start of a massive collection where over the course of oh god however long it takes we are going to go through every single resident evil so be sure to be here for that insanity and the rest and if you really really want to be there for it feel free to swing by my twitch as well where we go for the achievement grinds live and it would be lovely to have you witness my suffering and we're also about to start the next resident evil on there as well of course as well though thank you to my amazing patreon subscribers who are all the absolute bees knees but i have talked for far too much today on that note thank you all so much again for watching i will hopefully see you all in the next one so until then take care bye bye for now